And today I'm going to talk about uh, the advances in uh, biomedical optical biopsy. And you see that on the slide. Uh, we're going to talk about, I have to uh, only pick on the salient features of the five things that, are, that have occurred over the last couple of years, which, see if I get this right? No. Whoops. Get to be a, okay, let me go back to this. Okay, I'm going to talk about the, there's five numbers here. Use of the near-infrared windows. And the aim of this research is really to find out in cancer, to find out the aggressiveness of the cancer. If you have cancer, it's more or less okay. But if you have aggressive cancer, it metastasizes. And you really want to have all the techniques that we have developed over the years uh, in optical fluorescent spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, to really pinpoint the evasiveness. So I'm going to be talking about these new windows, the four new windows that we're talking about that allows you to go deep into tissue. And the key thing today is the tryptophan that I, we discovered that really is the marker of the uh, aggressiveness of cancers. And then I want to talk about how spatial frequencies can be used to grade uh, tumors, because that's the key in finding out what the degree of the cancer is. In particular, uh, resonant Raman scattering, which will help our, our spe previous speaker, is that resonant Raman scattering is unique using a special wavelength of 532. And I'd like to bring that point forward today, that this particular wavelength, uh, really discovered by one of my postdocs, uh, Chen Lu, that was when she was in China, she came back with a bunch of data that showed that 532 is magic. And then I want to touch on the supercontinuum. So first of all, this slide shows you what optical biopsy is all about. You send light in, and then the, the tissue glows and it emits all the colors. These colors could be in, in, in scattered light and in fluorescence or Raman, and you're trying to find the tumor that is located in the lower uh, right-hand side of the slide. OCT is one of, the, one, of the, one of the areas as part of optical biopsy that Jim really pushed that forward. And then we got fluorescence, absorption, and Raman, which are all the spectroscopies that allow you to probe the, uh, the particular material. Over the years, 650 to 950 was used to go into tissues. And that's why most people use 800 nanometers. But that is the first window, and it was only because of silicon detectors. It turns out that the, with the advent of indium gallium arsenide and indium antimonide uh, photo detectors, it allows to go into the SWIR, short wavelength infrared. And these, these different zones, Windows 2, Windows 3, and Windows 4, allows you to probe uh, in, in, in particular areas to go deeper into tissue. It turns out after some work done by uh, two of my, one of my students and one of my postdocs that uh, Laura Sedillo and uh, Li Yang Shi, that the magic wavelength, or well, not the magic, the golden window, let's call it, is that the window number three, it minimizes the scattering which blurs the image while the absorption helps you. So, and this slide on the, I guess it's on the, I guess your right-hand side. If you look at the penetration depth where window two is, this is of brain tissue, showing you that the deepest wavelength that light penetrates is really at 1,700 nanometers. That allows you to go deep into tissues and allows you to image better without much scattering, but it has absorption. As long as you're not photon starved, you have good images. Now, like I said before, you really want to find the key marker in tissues to do cancer with fluorescence or absorption or Raman. And it turns out tryptophan, I believe, is the key marker for cancer. Uh, cells can be normal, aggressive, or as the first slide, as first statement said, aggressive cancers. We find that 
that tryptophan is more, is more into cancer cells and, and than the normal cells. It turns out that cancer cells like to eat tryptophan, and that essentially is the vehicle where they move about. And this slide shows that this is the native fluorescence. People like to call this autofluorescence, but really it's intrinsic fluorescence. No dyes are added, and there are three, three types of cells here. There is the aggressive cells and the uh, non-aggressive, and, and, and you see immediately that there's more signal from the aggressive cancers in the tryptophan region of 3,500 nanometers. So, so it's important to, to find out that the, uh, the elevation of tryptophan relative to NADH and flavins is essentially important to find out if you do indeed have an aggressive cancer. Hopefully this could be results in a, a technique or a method to detect aggressive cancers. Now, when you're grading tissues, uh, one, one knows that spatial, all of us, know, I think in optics know, that spatial frequencies uh, are essentially the, the, the make up uh, an image of a photograph or an object. You have certain spatial frequency that makes up that, that image. It has low frequencies and high frequencies. And then if you use the Fourier transform, I don't understand why I can't use this. Oh, here we go. Use the Fourier transform, then you could use that as a new types of spectroscopy, not using colors, but using spatial frequencies. So when you take, an, when you take a, a, a graded sample going from of a cervix, going from, whoops, going from uh, different grades of CN1, CN2, CN3, you can see the structure changing. So the spatial frequencies that you get, this is the Fourier transform of this spectra, is essentially seeing uh, the different, if you look down here, you see that the, instead of having colors, instead of being like, a, a, if people do Rayleigh wing scattering, you will see that this looks like an increased chaos and that the wings of these, the, this, this, this Fourier spectrum gets broader and this could give a number to the grade of an image or a cancer. So you, instead of having just a doctor telling you, oh, it looks like CN1, CN2 because I notice, but you get a number now that could tell you uh, that you have have a spectra, and a spectra could be qualified being aggressive or not, and the grade of it. So, but in resonant Raman scattering, which you really wouldn't want to do if you're doing tissues, however, it was done, and in resonant Raman scattering, this is the energy level diagram, the light goes into the absorption band, and then the Raman photon, the Stokes wave, goes to the vibration. In tissues, 532 is in the out resonance, in the small resonance, but because it's very close, the cross section will explode. We become greater. No nanoparticles needed, no gold is needed, just that the natural flow of flavins in a tissue. Now, initially, I did Raman scattering at 1064, and there was no wing, but Mike Feld, my good friend, uh, used 785 and had this, this fantastic work of this long wing, and on top of the wing is Raman scattering. Anybody doing Raman scattering would know that. It turns out when you use 532, you don't get any wing. And you could use this, res and, and the resonant Raman is almost equal to the fluorescence. So it's a very powerful tool, and, and the fact is that in, we did some work on brain cancer, different grades, and if you look over here at the grade and this ratio of, of the tryptophan line at 588 to, to the lipid line at 1400, you can see at the grade, the tryptophan is becoming larger. Similarly, if you're looking at the protein line at 2934 over the 28 lipid line, you see also an increase of the, of the, uh, of the protein in, in a grade. 
Now, let's not forget the most important thing. Well, forget that. That just tells you the vibrations of tryptophan. I haven't had time to go into that. I could spend an hour on that. And, and now we go to the supercontinuum. I go this very quickly. Everybody knows the supercontinuum. You send in a femtosecond laser into a fiber, and you go from 400 to 2600. And this could be used now for a, a new type of microscope where you have the two photon stimulated Raman resonances and so forth. I just got the word that I'm talking too much. So this is what conceptually a supercontinuum microscope is. It's a femtosecond laser going into a fiber or a liquid or in a uh, gas cell. XY scanner goes into a microscope, objective and tissue, you scan it, goes either into a time-resolved street camera to get time-resolved image or into spectrograph to get a spectral image. I think I finished.